In today's video, we're going over strength testing for the knee. Push, 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 push. What's up guys? This is Dan from Fitness Pain Free. I'm a physical therapist and strength coach. We've helped to make thousands of incredible coaches and clinicians for online courses, communities, and mentoring programs. The goal of today's video is to make you 1% better. All right, so measuring quad and hamstring strength is going to be very important for your athletes after they had a major lower extremity surgery particularly at the knee the biggest one being acl reconstruction now we can use these numbers for a variety of different things so for one it's going to determine whether or not your athlete is ready to turn back to sport you can also use limb symmetry index or how strong the surgical side is compared to the non-surgical side to guide your treatment over the course of time so let's say around 70 percent lsi you can start to initiate plyometrics around 80%, maybe you're doing a return to run program, 90% you're doing some sport specific drills, and finally 100% you're ready to return to sport. So our goal is obviously to get as close as possible to 100% LSI, but the other thing is that we wanna to try to utilize the numbers that we get on our strength testing to dictate our programming. So let's say you have an athlete who has a very weak quad, but their hamstring is fine, you can spend more time working on the quadricep, maybe it's flip, the hamstring is weak and the quad is very strong, we don't have to worry as much about the quad, we can focus more on the hamstring. All right, so we're gonna talk about knee extension first, so measuring the quad. So we're using a Vald Dynamo, handheld dynamometer. There's a lot of different ones on the market, but this is one that we like to use. And then we have this attached from a chain to something stable, squat rack. We have it attached to a strap here at the ankle. So go ahead and kick out just a little bit here. All right, awesome. So the idea is that basically Jake can push as hard as he possibly wants, and there's gonna be no movement, and the Dynamo is gonna pick up how much force he produces, okay? couple specifics here. So largely we're gonna have Jacob sitting up nice and tall, good posture. We're gonna have a towel underneath the knee here. One of the reasons why we have the towel is we don't wanna have any pressure up against the leg here. If something hurts while the athlete is doing this test, probably not gonna push that hard, right? We also wanna be at 90 degrees. So if you have a goniometer, you can use that to measure it. The reason why that's important is because we're gonna be calculating torque in a minute. And the thing is you can measure at 60 degrees, but math becomes a little bit more challenging. So we like to measure at 90. Hey there, sorry to interrupt, but I've got something cool. It's an evidence-based exercise selection cheat sheet after ACL reconstruction. Sometimes it's a little bit scary working with patients after ACL reconstruction. Obviously you don't want to hurt them and the exercises that we choose matter. So I created a cheat sheet to help you out. It goes over which movements have the most strain on the ACL graft and how to dose those exercises from low to high. We use the evidence to guide us so you can make the right decision for your patient after ACL reconstruction. We'll also tackle that age old question of whether or not you should be using open kinetic chain knee extensions with your patients early on after ACL reconstruction. This cheat sheet is 100% free. I'll leave a link in the show notes in the description below. Go ahead and click on that and get to learning. Now, back to your video. So you also want to give your athletes a little bit of a warm up. So maybe one or two repetitions where they're slowly pressing into the resistance. And then from here, just go ahead and ramp up, maybe 50% of your max, 75% of your max, everything feel okay. Yep. And obviously if you have any sharp pain that day, you probably want to push through that. Okay. The second thing is that my cueing is going to change based on what I'm trying to measure. So if I'm trying to measure peak force, I'm gonna have you push very slowly into the pressure until you meet that resistance. From here, go ahead and ramp up and then push, 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 push. Whoa. So Jacob's so strong, he actually moved this uh, platform here. So obviously we'd have someone stand on that in the future so we didn't have him move because we'd have a bad measurement. So after you've done your warm ups, your athlete is ready to go. When we're trying to measure peak force, my cueing changes a little bit compared to when I'm trying to measure uh, rate of force production. So essentially when I want peak force, my cueing is to go ahead and slowly ramp into the pressure, and then push, 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 push as hard as you can. And here's the thing, I wanna motivate him some. So if I yell at him a little bit, it's probably gonna increase his strength a bit. And it's important that you're just consistent from patient to patient, but also from test to test. So at month three, if I tell him to push as hard as he possibly can, and then on month four, I'm really quiet and say, go ahead and push a little bit, he might be a little weaker on month four, simply because I didn't motivate him enough. All right, and largely you can take somewhere between one to three measurements and you either take the strongest peak force or you can average the three, it's up to you. If we're trying to measure rate of force development, which is basically how fast we produce that force, we wanna change our cueing. So largely, we're gonna tell uh, Jacob right here to take the slack out of the chain, right? But largely I want you to push as fast as you possibly can, as hard as you possibly can all at once. And usually I give my athletes a countdown. So three, two, one, push, 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 and relax. And here's the thing, we have the research, we have some research to show that your rate of force development lags behind your peak force. 
So you may have an athlete that has great peak force, but they can't produce that force quickly. And that's a problem when you're trying to jump, change direction, sprint, so on and so forth. So largely we're looking to have around 90% plus peak force, but also 90% plus limb symmetry index for rate of force development. Now, if you don't have access to a fancy handheld dynamometer, one thing I suggest doing instead is you take your patient's phone, set it to fitness pain-free channel, click on any video, take the phone, put it, you can relax here for a second. You put it inside this cuff here. It's a little tricky though, because you gotta set it up so it's just on the like button. And from here, go ahead and push. Push, not too hard, not too hard. What's really nice about the Vault Dynamo is that you can gamify knee extension and hamstring curls a little bit. So largely, Jacob, let's have you push into this lightly. Good, and then push, 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 push. And you can see that this number just goes up, 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 up. So while your athlete is performing their handheld dynamometry, I'll show them the cell phone and they can see that number go up. And the idea is to get as high as you possibly can, which is pretty nice. So we're looking for good limb symmetry index. Essentially you have the involved side leg divided by the opposite side leg and that gives you LSI. We're getting as close to 100% as possible. The problem with that is it doesn't measure how strong you are relative to your body weight. So you might have great LSI, but you're just weak in general. So what we want to do to make sure that we're ensuring your athlete is strong enough is to measure torque. All right, so measuring torque is gonna to require you to change a couple things. For one, in the handheld, handheld dynamometry settings, we have to measure newtons and not kilograms or pounds of force. Now, if your handheld dynamometer can't do that, I'll put a link in the description for a calculator from Scott Morrison that allows you to bypass that. The second thing you need is gonna be your patient's weight in kilograms. And the last thing you're going to need is going to be the distance from the center of the joint down to where the handheld dynamometer is. And that's gotta be in meters. So let's say that we measure 40 centimeters from Jacob's knee all the way down to the handheld dynamometer. That would end up being 0.4 meters. And to calculate torque, you take the person's amount of force they produce in newtons, you multiply that by the distance, so 0.4 in this case, and you divide that number by their body weight in kilograms. So what are we looking for from a torque perspective? So for men, our goal is to have a 3.0 measurement, and for women, we want a 2.3. You can also use these numbers as a criterion for returning back to things like plyos, sport, so on and so forth. So maybe for guys at around 2.5, you can start initiating plyometrics. For women, maybe that's around 1.8. Over the course of time as torque increases, so does the uh, level of challenge you throw at your patient. To measure the hamstrings or knee flexion, it's the same exact thing that we do with knee extension, but it's flipped. So again, we have a chain, to something stationary, it doesn't move. We have our handheld dynamometer right here. We have Jacob sitting, we've got a towel underneath that knee, we're at 90 degrees. So that's gonna be important so we can measure torque, although torque's probably not as important for the hamstring as is with the quadricep. So the cueing's the same, the warm-up's the same. So if you need to, warm up, one or two repetitions, make sure the athlete is ready. If you're trying to measure peak force, your cues are go ahead and push lightly into the resistance once you feel it. Push, 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 push as hard as you can. Take a breather. If you're measuring rate of force development, let's take the slack out of this. I want you to push as hard and as fast as you can. Three, two, one, push, 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 and then relax. Another thing you may want to consider measuring, particularly if you're working with a patient, post-op ACL reconstruction, is going to be the hamstring to quadricep ratio. And the way you calculate this, you take the peak force of the hamstring, divided by the peak force of the quadricep. Now we do have a little bit of research to show that this number is below about a 0.6, maybe a 0.5, your risk of having a new tear for the ACL goes up after you've had the revision surgery, or excuse me, the reconstruction surgery. However, it's also important to keep in mind this literature is mixed. So you're gonna find different numbers that are okay, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. You'll also find some research that doesn't matter whatsoever. Just take it with a grain of salt, but it's one more thing to optimize your patients for returning after ACL reconstruction. All right, so now you know how to measure the strength at the knee. The next thing you need to know are some good exercises to improve those strength numbers. Well, I've got a video for you put that link in the corner, go ahead and click on that video. We'll go over my favorite advanced strengthening exercises for the knee. I'll talk to you then.